Hey folks, Jamie here today. Uh, today I'm going to show you guys uh, the 2001 Yamaha R6, uh, also known as a 5EB. Um, what, what to look for when the battery is not holding a charge and uh, it's basically dying on you while you're riding and you fully charged battery. Um, yeah, basically just going to show you guys the easiest things to check and uh, what I found was the problem with mine. So here I've got the 2001 Yamaha R6 also known as a 5EB. Um, so when, when your battery isn't charging, it can be a few different things. Um, first off, where you want to start is under the seat. So remove the seat, I've already undone the uh, screws there. And uh, as you can see with the green tape on it here is the battery. Now that would be the first thing I would test, see if the battery is any good. Um, in my case, the battery was fine. But the second thing I would check would be the uh, the wiring and whatnot. And, uh, um, the wiring is like, I mean, it's old, it's from 2001, but there's no issues with it that I found. Um, so then, the other thing is the rectifier or the stator, or it could even be both. So now, what was happening with mine was that I would be riding it after fully charging the battery, like on a uh, trickle charger, a battery charger, and uh, I would first notice that my signal lights would uh, stop working, and then uh, my uh, um, gauge thing here, it would just randomly shut off with the tack. And if I revved the bike up, it would kind of come back on for a little bit. And then it would just all together shut off. And then the uh, bike itself would shut off. So for like a couple minutes, I'd be riding and the, this would all be just turned off. Um, but the bike would still be running. And uh, yeah, so it obviously it couldn't ride like that, and then eventually the motor would just shut off because it wouldn't get any more uh, power to uh, have spark for the engine. Um, so the uh, stator I have not even checked. Um, I believe it's under this cover right here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on that. Um, but I went in the uh, path of least, least trouble. Like I said, by checking the battery first, then checking the wiring, and then I moved on to the rectifier. And so I did a basic uh, test on the rectifier to show that it was either the rectifier that was the problem or the stator. So let me show you what the rectifier looks like here. Is um, I've got the old rectifier right here. So this is it. So it's just a very simple little piece of aluminum cast aluminum and uh, there's a plug in right here and uh, it basically just uh, right below the battery right here you can actually maybe see the new one sitting right there where my finger is pointing so it bolts in there like sideways to the uh, the uh, battery panel basically um, pretty close to it and uh, there's two 10 millimeter screws holding it in um, it's fairly easy to change um, the only thing that you have to do to get it out is you will have to remove the gas tank which is very simple there's two bolts right here um, depending on what yours has you might have uh, allen key screws uh, mine originally did and then they got changed I'm not sure what reason that was um, and then you've got one right here so loosen this one don't take it out undo these ones completely take them out and then lift the tank up and then you're going to have the uh, petcock underneath it shut the fuel off and then uh, disconnect the line and you may need to put a cap on the line because mine likes to weep a bit um, and then just uh, fully take the screw out lift the tank off and just put it on something soft then you can easily get at the rectifier um, let me see if I can show it better from this side. Um, so, you can kind of see it in there, like touching it right now. You can kind of see it, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see. Uh, from down here, yep, you can see the writing on it right here, right behind the uh, uh, brake uh, reservoir here. Um, so, anyways, that's how you take it out. Um, now, I'll show you how to test it. Um, so to test it, you're gonna need the bike running. Um, so you'll need a simple uh, voltmeter here. 
Um, so I'll put it to 12 volt and um, I'll just show you guys here. Just let me switch hands here with the camera. Uh, now, let's see if I can do this with two hands here. So, touch it on the leads and put it down. So now it says 12.25 without it running, 24. So that's without it running. So now, when it was bad, um, what would happen was that it would uh, go from 12 point something and while it was running it would constantly be dropping so it would uh, like for example I'll uh, plug it back in here um, so now and my uh, connections aren't very clean so it's going to read a little bit different depending on how good of a connection I get on so yeah see now it's bouncing all over because the connection is not very clean on the top um, so anyway say so it says 12.21 right now so now while it's running it would go 12.21 12.20 12.19 12.18 and it would just very slowly decrease and that was a sign that the rectifier was no good um, so now to properly test it you need to start up the bike and uh, um, hopefully you guys will be able to hear me. It's not super loud. It's got the scorpion muffler on it, but it's not too loud. Um, I'll try to talk loud. So, let's fire it up. It's not very warm yet. It's pretty cold still. Fired it up once for like just a couple minutes, but it's pretty cold. Um, so, now, while it's idling, it is still not a proper way to test it. What you need to do is, on the tack here, you need to bring the rest up to about, about uh, 3,000. So try to get somebody to hold the throw and watch it so it gets, gets up to 3,000 while you're testing the battery. And turn the high beams on and turn one of the signal lights on. So now you've got a load on the battery as well as it's running. So now, when it's running like that at that RPM, it should the uh, voltmeter should show on the battery about 13.5 to 14.6, as I would say a maximum. Um, lower than about 13.4. Um, it, it could be slightly lower than that, I suppose. Uh, but it really wouldn't go much lower. So. Uh, let's just try here, uh, we'll uh, turn the uh, high beam on, signal on, uh, there, yeah, signal's on, I can hear it, uh, the relay clicking, and uh, now we need, we should rev it up, uh, but that's going to be pretty difficult to do uh, with only one hand, um, so let's just see, because it is pretty good now, I'll show you what it, it should show, is uh, get to connect here, so it's doing 13.5, and uh, that's where they, uh, see with the high beam on and the signal on, that is a load on the engine, so now, So normally you would uh, rev it up to about 2,500 to three grand uh, while doing that, but uh, I was not able to do that with only one hand um, and to show testing and battery at the same time. So that is basically the uh, gist of it, uh, how you should test it. And uh, mine shows that it passes the test without revving it up. Um, uh, and it's like, I mean, the high beams on, the signal lights on, that's putting a load on it for on the uh, uh, stator and rectifier. Um, to kind of actually test it um, Otherwise if you didn't have that on there, there'd be no low and there wouldn't be much uh, resistance for it to just show a good charge um, So when you're replacing the uh, rectifier, um, I would strongly recommend not buying a Chinese one off eBay um, I have not tried one so but I've read a lot of reviews saying they were not good um, So anything like that, I would probably buy it from the dealership and uh, yeah, I hope this uh, helps you guys out and uh, you keep your bike running. I'll see you guys later.